Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about another compound called nanoxidil, so stick around. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash and welcome back to the show. Please remember to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a compound called nanoxidil. We've talked, uh, spoken quite a bit in the past about another compound called minoxidil, which acts as a hair stimulant. There's another compound on the market uh, by a company called Spectral DNC and it's called nanoxidil. So let's unpack that a little bit. And what is nanoxidil? Well, from a chemical perspective, it's very similar. If you look at the chemical structure of minoxidil and you look at the chemical structure of nanoxidil, there's only one carbon atom missing from the uh, carbon ring. It, it acts in a very similar sort of mechanism. It acts as a stimulator. It increases blood flow uh, to the scalp and therefore promotes uh, growth factors coming to the area and promotes uh, hair stimulation. So, the, uh, and well, the other difference between the, the two compounds, topical minoxidil and topical nanoxidil, is that if you look at the uh, data sheet with the nanoxidil, it contains a few other uh, um, compounds as well, azelaic acid and copper peptides, which are all designed to increase penetration of the active ingredient through the skin uh, into the scalp and therefore stimulate um, uh, follicular growth. So the ultimate question is, well, if you're looking at a comparison between minoxidil and nanoxidil, which is better? And unfortunately, the, uh, the answer I have is that I don't have an answer because no study has been done which compares both minoxidil and nanoxidil in comparison with each other. There's been one study that's been done on, on women with nanoxidil, which has shown uh, an appreciative increase in uh, hair thickness, hair density, hair count uh, in that area, but we don't know what the results would be in comparison with uh, minoxidil. So I think it's it, it sounds good, it sounds promising, but there's not enough data for me to go, oh yes, I prefer one compound versus the other. I'm very comfortable with the minoxidil. Certainly here in, in Australia, we can buy minoxidil over the counter. And what that tells me is that A, it's had a lot of uh, history. There's a lot of research and data to support it. And also the side effect profile is sufficiently low that you don't need a prescription to buy it. You can just buy it over the counter. So um, it's not a fair comparison between minoxidil or nanoxidil, but understand that they're both very similar compounds, work in very similar ways, and you know we just don't know uh, which one is superior so to speak so i hope that gives you a little bit more clarity into that thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next episode